Hey everyone, this is Ross and today I have just a really crazy harvest of fruit that I wanted to share with you guys. Just some things that I'm picking, talk about each individual thing. Maybe we could talk about the flavor for a little bit. Um, some things we have right in front of me here. Um, I can show you guys on this plate, this really beautiful plate. is some blueberries, some strawberries, gooseberries, and a fig. Um, and then we also have a couple nectarines and a peach. And I've been harvesting my first peaches, my first nectarines uh, very recently, my first apricot, my first plum. Uh, we got some cherries not too long ago. You know, so in terms of stone fruits, they're all ripening right about now. And then in terms of berries, I've been getting a crap ton of berries too, like gumi, honeyberries, strawberries, gooseberries, currants, the black currants, the red currants. Um, the blueberries here in front of me, I mean, everything in the yard is fruiting this year for the most part, and everything is great. Um, to be able to come out here almost every day and pick some sort of fruit has been really awesome. Um, so I've been truly, truly happy with this year. We were off to a really great start. Um, everything woke up very early. I'm surprised that I was able to get my first apple, too. Uh, we have a variety called Pristine. Maybe you guys saw that video. Pristine was able to ripen um, sometime around the 20th of June, which is insane. That's the, it's like one of the earliest apples that exists. It's also really tasty, so I'm <laughs> just super excited to have that apple. But I was also shocked to kind of find out that within the same time frame, the plums, the apricots, the nectarines and the peaches, I guess of the earlier varieties or the later varieties, they all kind of coincide with each other. So you kind of get a whole ton of fruit at one time and I'm not really sure what you guys do or what I'm gonna do when I'm, when I'm getting, you know, a couple hundred fruits a piece off each tree, it's gonna be something that uh, I'm not gonna be able to keep up with. You know, I'm gonna have to give away a lot of these fruits, I imagine, or figure out some way to kind of ration them off for a bit um, but anyway, you know, let's move on to what we got here and talk about each individual thing. The figs, of course, we've been doing, we've been growing very seriously with the help of the greenhouse. Normally a fall fruit, but with the help of the greenhouse, these Braba have been ripening off of a number of my trees. Um, and this is about the time you'd see Braba, about 90 days after the tree wakes up, or about 120 days at most after the tree wakes up. So a lot of my trees ended up waking up actually sometime in March in the greenhouse and that's why you're seeing these really tasty figs right now. And you can see specifically on this variety in the center of the fig, and a lot of times you'll see it dripping from the eye, but in this particular variety there's honey pooling in the center and its own little nectar. Let me get you guys, I guess, a decent close up here if we can get it. Focus that and see the glistening there in the center. I'm sure, it's very difficult to see, but it's in there. And normally, at different times of the year, depending on the variety, you're gonna get more honey and you're gonna get less honey. So I think at this warmer time of the year, when we're pretty much hitting 90 degrees now, I think today's gonna be 90 or tomorrow's gonna be 90. Um, you know, we've been getting warm weather. I think the honey slows down. It's not as prevalent because the fig actually ripens faster on the tree. And when it ripens faster on the tree, I think the honey doesn't really develop as much in certain certain varieties. And it may ripe, it may develop more in other varieties. So, um, you know, this particular variety, I know for a fact when it ripens in the fall, has a lot more honey. There also could be a difference between the Braba and the main and how those behave, but let's taste this. Oh man, that's great. That's really good. It even has some acidity to it, some tartness. It tastes like a nice little strawberry, but a fig, you know? It's not exactly a strawberry like you see here. These are my Mar de Bois. We're barely getting Mar de Bois strawberries nowadays they've taken they've given you a break you know the june berries stopped as well but the mar de bois are just they just keep putting out strawberries all year in fact they're going to put out a huge crop sometime in august all the way till frost 
they just don't stop producing. In fact, I don't think it really makes sense to have another variety other than this so far. Um, but it's hard to really say that that's a strawberry, you know? Um, you know, this isn't exactly the sweetest strawberry because they're picked a bit under ripe. I've been battling the slugs. Um, but I'd say when this is perfectly ripe, less tart, more sweet, it has a, certainly a similar flavor to this, but it, there's its own nectar in here. Makes it really sweet. You know, sort of melony, figgy. Uh, so far, it's really tough to beat a fig, guys. The strawberry, um, you know, of course is there when it's perfectly ripe. I think the Mar de Bois is probably a nine out of 10, whereas the fig is a 10 out of 10. But the fig even tastes a bit like dates and raisins and a little syrupy, a little sugary. There's so many interesting, complex flavors in, the, in a fig, it's, it's crazy. Now I wanna show you guys, uh, next is the blueberry, and you guys are, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the blueberry. I have some here off of a particular variety that are bigger than about the same width as my thumb. I mean, this thing is, is huge. Uh, and I think this variety is so much bigger than the others. Here's a nice little comparison. It's literally three to four times the size of other blueberries I have. And I think that's because that variety just put out less blueberries. Um, and they just got bigger. All, more of the energy got focused into those bl particular blueberries. And as a result, it's huge. But the flavor is not bad, right? It's coming from a northern highbush blueberry. But I've also got one here. I think it's a rabbit eye. It's got a different, slightly different flavor, more wild blueberry flavor. I forget the name of it. I had to go check, but it's these smaller ones here. And they got a really wild, more complex flavor, I think, to them. And then we also have the blueberry, or the, um, the gooseberry here. This is actually a red variety called Hinomaki Red. And my Trixie is ripening, which is also red. And my Hinomaki Red is ripening right now. The both of them are quite good, but I've noticed differences in terms of, slight differences in terms of the flavor, but also in the texture, in that my Trixia is more of like a, a grainy pear on the inside, which is not as pleasant. Whereas this is more like a smooth grape. Mm. It was getting a bit grainy. So I guess as they ripen longer, they get a bit grainier in the inside and not as smooth, but they're very similar to grapes in terms of texture and how they feel in your mouth. Also in, in appearances as well, they're really good. In fact, I like them better than the blueberries. Um, certainly I do. They, they're tart, they're sweet. There's like a burst of flavor in your mouth. I like the texture a lot because it's crunchy on the outside. I like crunchy foods. And now we've got our, our stone fruits here. And across the board, they've been attacked by something. And uh, some of them are not necessarily perfectly ready, but they have been softening up on the tree. I made sure that they were softening up. This one here is not that soft, but there's a piece here that got attacked by something. There's, I'm sure there's some sort of insect in here that's causing issues or something. Um, some kind of damage. So I don't want this to spoil on the tree. I want to pick this right before it's, it's sort of perfect. And then we're going to bring it in the house and eat it later. But I do have a, a sugar may. That's what these are is a, or actually the peach is a sugar may peach, which means it's a white flesh peach peach and they're sweeter, less acid. Um, there's certainly got some insects in here and there was also um, some exterior, you know, just marks on the exterior that kind of looked like something had pecked it and then it healed over with some sap from the tree. And that's mostly cosmetic, but you know, getting an insect in there, there's definitely a hole and I saw a centipede crawl out of here. 
or not necessarily a centipede, something that got in here. But it's gonna be okay. I'm not too worried about it. This isn't the most soft peach in the world, but this is really the first peach that I'm eating of the year. And I wanna eat it now, rather. I don't, I don't really wanna wait. <laughs> so let's eat it. And also it smells great. It smells just like a peach. Very fragrant fruit. Let's bite into this. That's really good. In fact, it's almost perfect. You can see it's white fleshed. Sugar May, it's actually a commercial variety too. People really like this peach, I love it. In fact, I tried some at the store that are pretty much as good as this. Um, I guess the grower had really ripened them before picking them. And then uh, I got to taste some and they blew me away. So I was immediately just caught by white flesh peaches and said I gotta grow them. Um, however, so far this peach is not better than my Red Haven, as an example. Which is, uh, maybe I have to have them side by side, but they're still really, really good. Better than any store-bought peach, other than the those white flesh peaches I was talking about. I've never had a peach like those from the store. That's so good. It really is great. It's so juicy. If you're not careful when you bite into it, it's going to uh, drip all over you. And then here's the nectarine, and this is um, this is also a white flesh nectarine. I forget the name of it. I think it's Arctic Queen, but I can look it up in my spreadsheet. And if you guys want to check out my spreadsheet and see where that is, you can see all the fruit I'm growing, all the figs I'm growing. Just go in the description of the video right now and you can see the spreadsheet that I'm talking about. I'm just opening it up right now. It's really handy to have this kind of thing for your records, just to be accurate. I go into the, the sheet here, my other spreadsheet. Yeah, that's the Arctic Glow Nectarine. And this, I think, is a white fleshed nectarine, but I don't remember it being a white fleshed nectarine. I thought Arctic Glow was something else, but... Let's try it here. Nectarines are pretty incredible in terms of their bricks. They can have really high bricks on them. And it's not too soft, but it is getting soft in certain areas, so I wanna make sure that I get this. Hmm, not really perfect. But I'm gonna, interestingly enough, I gotta take all this out of here weirdness in here. I think that's the tree sap. <laughs> but <laughs> mm. that's good. That's really good. Yeah, the pit here had some weird issue. The pit split on me. That's what happened. And the pits also had got this weird blackness on it here that I'm sure it's fine to eat, but probably not the best to eat. And maybe there was some sort of issue, but you can see that the, here's the interior of the pit and it just completely split wide open. So that's probably some issue with it ripening. And on most of these, you don't wanna eat the pit. Most of these stone fruits, I think there's some cyanide in there. I know on certain like you know, uh, apricots, you're not supposed to eat the pit, although on some you can. So I just want to avoid it, <laughs> to be honest with you. But nonetheless, really good. And it's tough to really tell which one's better, the peach or the nectarine. I think I like the nectarine better. You know what? It is such a nice joy to be able to even compare such a thing. I mean, you guys, if you can do the same thing, I, you, we're just so lucky. We really are. I'm telling you, man. This was a really incredible breakfast. I'm gonna finish off camera. But uh, yeah, I wanna thank you guys for watching. 
What I'm gonna do is actually do a, a video on the blueberries and on the gooseberries because we haven't done that yet. But uh, I'm gonna do that now. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This little sit down breakfast with me. This is really a joy. I mean, if you're not convinced at this point, you should be growing fruit. You know, you should be growing specific varieties that are give, gonna give you a longer window or a specific characteristic are just gonna taste better than others. Um, you know, I don't know what to say at this point. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. I really do hope it was entertaining. I know we didn't show you much. We didn't move around all that much, but uh, yeah, I think this is sort of important to drive this point home. Anyway, guys, take care. Catch me out or you know, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter too if you guys got this far. Check out the blog as well. I know you guys, if you got this far, you'd probably be interested in the blog. All that's down in the description along with the spreadsheet. Check us out on Patreon. Um, you know, thanks for, thanks for the support, guys. All right, everyone. Take care. We'll see you for tomorrow's video. Catch you later.